So, uh, tidal volume, respiratory. Uh, we've, in remember new CPR class, we, we, we had time for we were bagging our patients. And that was kind of easy because it said the patient wasn't breathing. Uh, so if somebody who's not breathing, whose respiratory rate is too low, we obviously know we need to bag them. But there's also a thing called that somebody's breath is too shallow. So go ahead and just take a normal breath. Probably have not thought about breathing until I said that, but now every breath you can think, okay, I gotta breathe. Okay, gotta breathe again. So you don't think about it until somebody says something about it. Uh, but your normal control of respiration is something that is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So we don't normally have to consciously think about it. And when you take a breath, your normal breath is about 500 milliliters. So if you think of a two liter soda, one liter soda, 12 ounce, 20 ounce, whatever, um, they don't make 20 ounce sodas anymore, do they? So what does your Coke there say? 500 milliliters. 500 milliliters, so that's how much air you breathe in and out, right there, in a normal breath. Now how big of a breath do you think you could take if you fully exhale and fully inhale? So you breathe everything out, squeeze out every little last drop, then you inhale in. One T pitcher. One T pitcher. That's pretty darn close. Because we can get upwards of two liters. So the T pitcher is probably going to hold about a two liter bottle, I would think. So yeah, you're, you're pretty darn close with that. That's good. Uh, but it varies a little bit from person to person depending on how, how big they are. Now, um, some of this uh, air that we breathe in fills up our mouth, and it fills up our trachea, and it fills up the bronchi and the bronchioles before it gets all the way down to the viola. So remember, and I'm not the, the best artist here, um, but when we breathe, the little nose, my mouth, and it comes down to our, our chest, the lungs, I need a whole lot of practice with artistic skills before I go for a while. <laughs> but all of the space that fills up this area down to the lungs is what we call dead space. And that dead space in a typical person is about um, 150 milliliters. So, only what is reaching the alveoli is the difference between the two. So I do 500 minus 150, I'm going to end up with about 350 milliliters. And we call that alveolar ventilation. And for oxygen and carbon dioxide to exchange, they have to get down to the alveoli. So your normal breath, 150 milliliters, is just kind of filling up the space that has to be filled up. 350 milliliters of it is usable. Now when we're breathing, we normally breathe, do um, you remember what your textbook answer was for normal respiratory rate? someone breathe here just quietly for a minute, they're breathing probably somewhere around 10 to 20 breaths per minute. And that's just normal. We know if somebody is breathing less than eight times a minute, we need to ventilate. So that's when we're going to get out of the bag about mask and bag them. Um, or if somebody is breathing greater than 30. Although if they're gre greater than 30, you have to Kind of be a little cautious because I can, <laughs> and I'm breathing faster than 30 times a minute, but nobody hold me down to bed right now because I don't need it. So you kind of have to watch your patience. The idea is that they're breathing more than 30 times a minute, they're breathing too fast, and they're probably breathing too shallowly. And that's actually the word that I want you to, to kind of cue in on on tests is if it's too fast or too shallow. Uh, and the problem with breathing too shallow, let's, let's walk through some math. And we talk about this tidal volume, we do these calculations. Um, but you're never going to have the actual numbers in the field. We have devices that can measure this. Um, uh, 
county barometers uh, that can measure the amount of air that we breathe in and out, but we don't typically do that in the ambulance. So I'm going to take just an average. If we're going to breathe 12 breaths per minute in one minute, and each breath has 500 milliliters in one breath, what does that work out to? Yeah, math, I know. It's almost like algebra because there's letters up there. It's really just multiplication. It looks like we started it. So I take 12 times 500, and that's 6,000. And then 1 times 1 is 1, and that's nice. My breaths cancel out, so I end up with milliliters mm -hmm. in one minute. So my tidal volume is 6,000 milliliters in one minute. So that's kind of normal. So if you take the average person, watch her breathe for a minute, there could be about 6,000 milliliters or six liters of air that go in and out of it. No problem. Uh, if someone is breathing too slowly, so let's say they're breathing only four, And that, I mean, that's just simple, simple math at that time. You can play around with numbers all, all you want. But the idea here is that that's going to be too, too slow, and they're not going to have enough air going in and out, not going to have enough oxygen coming in and carbon dioxide going out. Now, where it gets kind of a little more difficult, and again, you won't do the numbers in the field, but I want you to understand the concept, is when we get into someone who's breathing too fast. So someone who's breathing 40 times a minute, and if we have 500 milliliters per breath, now we're up to 20,000 milliliters per minute. And that's fine. What, I, what typically happens though is when someone starts to breathe that fast, they're not breathing as deeply. So when someone's breathing fast, typically their, their tidal volume will drop. So if they're breathing 40 times a minute, maybe they're only gonna breathe, let's say 300 milliliters instead of 500 milliliters with each breath, because I can't go <laughs> and breathe real fast. So if I do that 300 milliliters per breath, and I just multiply this out, I'm still at 1,200 milliliters in one minute. 12,000 milliliters in one minute, I said that wrong, 12,000 milliliters in one minute. Um, which should be enough to support us. But remember the dead space thing? So let's talk about alveolar ventilation. So if somebody's breathing 12 times a minute, and do you remember how much alveolar ventilation was in a typical breath? A normal breath is 500 milliliters of air. 150 milliliters of a is dead space, so it's 350 milliliters. So what does that equal up to? 4250? Mm -hmm. so my breaths cancel out. So I end up with what's going into my alveolar space, my alveoli, is 4,250 4, milliliters in a minute. And that's enough for oxygen and carbon dioxide to go back and forth. And that's cool. Now, if I look at just dead space, and take the hundred, took the 150 milliliters out of there, um, and somebody who's breathing fast. So if we look at that top one, if they're breathing 40 times a minute, and each breath is 300 milliliters, how much is getting down to the alveoli? Um, <coughs> yep, so 300. The 150 of dead space doesn't change ever. That's just how big your mouth and your trachea and your bronchi are. That's, that doesn't change.
So then I am left with only 150 milliliters for my alveolar ventilation. So if I take this 150 milliliters, and I multiply that by the 40 breaths per minute, what do I get? Four times fifteen. You should actually be able to do that. Well, you guys don't probably look at round clocks anymore, do you? <laughs> How many minutes in an hour? Sixty. Sixty. So four times fifteen is sixty. So we're back up to six thousand milliliters, which is probably enough to live on. But it's a whole lot less than what we working. And if I have my normal, remember my normal was 350, but I'm only breathing 12 times a minute. So I'm, st I'm still getting enough into the alveolar, but as our respiratory rate goes up, our tidal volume, the amount drops. So somebody who's breathing maybe 45 times a minute, 50 times a minute. Now each breath may be, let's say 200 milliliters. So if I go to 200 milliliters, I have to subtract my 150 milliliters of dead space. That only leaves me 50 milliliters that's getting down for each breath. So even at 50 times a minute, 50 breaths, 50 milliliters, now I'm just at 2,500. So again, these are just numbers that we're throwing around, but this is our minute ventilation. How, how many milliliters of air we're moving in and out of somebody in a minute. And if we're breathing too fast, then it gets too shallow, and then we're not getting enough to get an alveolar. So a lot of numbers to throw around to say, they're breathing too slow, we need to breathe more. They're breathing too fast, too shallowly, we need to breathe more. And that's your minute ventilation. I know they take a lot of pages of that in your textbook.